Before I tell you about all the new stuff, let's talk about the important one, okay? Blizzard has taken the landmark decision in their latest article of banning GDK peace, alright? Look, look at this, we are experimenting with a new policy which will no longer allow GDK peace runs in Season of Discovery. I honestly can't believe it, we have been clamoring for this for ever since Classic came out basically, uh, and after 5 years it finally happened. With the launch of February 8th, we are restricting this activity. The Madman did it. I know, I know. We haven't seen it yet. Let's see how they enforce it. But, but God, dude. Was it that hard? Thank God. Probably the biggest thing, my biggest pet peeve with Classic WoW. And now it is gone. So I am glad. Okay, getting rid of that, that tear shed moment for a minute, that emotional moment, it's time to talk about the new changes, okay, you came here for that. No Meregan is gonna be a 10 player raid, that was confirmed by Agrend uh, about a month ago, of course. It's gonna have 6 bosses, which I see as a bit of a concern. They are only adding one boss, and basically my problem with BFD was that the loot table was way too big for the amount of bosses that were there. So, for example, there was way more mail items than we actually needed in the tables. And okay, let's hope they learn from that. Of course, it's gonna get a little ameliorated because shamans and hunters are gonna go for mail now and the warriors and the paladins are gonna go for plate. So it's gonna even out quite a bit. They also said they are taking a compromise. They are gonna do the dungeon available on day one of Season of Discovery, but at the same time, there will only be two lockouts instead of three. So that is basically to limit the amount of extra gear that the tryhard people that are gonna do it in day one are gonna get, which... Okay, I, I don't know if it's ideal, but uh, uh, this is fine. I think most people are going to be happy about this. The people that try hard and do it fast are going to be rewarded. And at the same time, the people that want to take it a little easy and just spend a week leveling, they are not going to feel too behind after that. So I think this is probably the best case scenario. This right here is the boss scene where you are going to find the crowd pummeler now, which is, uh, this is hilarious. They are playing into the meme and we're going to talk about playing into the meme because I think they nailed one item in particular. Let's talk about the items, okay? These gloves are going to give you maces and fist weapons. This is probably going to be for shamans. It's less but like maybe you're gonna see something like a fury warrior taking this if the best weapon becomes a maze there is this trinket with a robot chicken which is just a, a pet trinket we have seen this from engineering it's basically another dps cooldown which is pretty good this is a slow one-hander and it is a maze so we might see like a combo where people take the gloves for the maze skill and this maze as a one-hander this item right here is gonna give you one percent dodge and it's also gonna give you a thousand armor on cooldown of course this is aimed at the best basically in vanilla any armor that you get from any effect is multiplied off your bear form that didn't happen uh, in the next expansions but so far this looked to be a very strong item for tank bears uh, of course every tank is gonna want it but bears in particular are gonna benefit from this quite a lot then there is this maze with a little healing on it, probably best in slot for healers, it looks similar to the Scarlet Monastery maze, albeit better and here this is this is the one this is the one dude I'm gonna zoom it out Automatic Crowd Pummeler. We have seen a couple data mine versions of this item, and I, I told you they like making fake versions of the data mine to mess with the data miners. This is the definitive item, okay? Look at this meme factory. I am so happy. They nailed it. As you know, the Crowd Pummeler, the manual Crowd Pummeler, the old item, was the best in slot druid item in the game because both for cats and for bears uh, the extra 550% attack speed is the best cooldown in the game for you and they are keeping it although this time it's not gonna be charge reliant it's gonna have a 3 minute cooldown which is a nerf it is a nerf but look at this 69 attack power for cat and bear so they completely embraced the bear druid nature of this item they also put strength and agility on it which I believe it didn't have it yet so this this item right here, complete baller, every bear and cat in the game is gonna want it, I can't wait to get this thing, and that means I'm gonna stack all the split without any other druid, so I get it. <laughs> Here's another funny meme, uh, this is just a, a caster offhand, it's pretty good, the name though, the Necro Gnomicon, hey, I see what you did there. There is also a couple aesthetic cosmetic items here, like a trog transfigurator thingy and this probably does like some sort of light on you or something like that 
And this is the random teleporter from Rato the Lich King, apparently, so that, that's pretty good. Uh, I, I like these fun items. As a matter of fact, I was kind of surprised that we didn't get any more just for fun items in phase one. Like, this, this fits with the season of Discovery team pretty well. Now, they are only showing three sets here. We haven't seen the leather set yet, so I want to see what surprise we want to pull with that. But let's take a look at the set bonuses for plate here. 7 defense, 16 attack power, 1% hit, pretty similar to the one that you get in, in BFD, although of course better stats, look at this 1% crit here. The 2 set of the clot set is gonna be 1% hit, so they are getting the hit much easier. And there is also this 3 set here, this proc, to give you 40 spell power every time you cast. Uh, this seems pretty similar to BFD altogether. And this one right here is a little weird. The male one, it gives you mana. 5% chance of restoring mana, there is no hit on it, uh, at least on the piece they showed us, there might be on the chest or the legs or whatever, we, we are only seeing the chest here actually. 1% crit and a bunch of mana, uh, shamans are gonna love this. That is about all the items they showed us, but there is a lot more updates than that. They are showing a couple new abilities, enhanced blessings, I got no idea what this is supposed to be for the paladin. Totemic projection, this is probably to make totems raid wide, I do not know. Redirect right here, this is a rogue ability, basically the I think this one is intended to move your combo points from one target to another, which, as you know, that was the biggest problem with the rogue tank. So they they seem to understand what the problem with the rogue tank is. Whether they are gonna fix it or not, that's a challenge. We don't know that. Now let's take a look at the new runes, and they are only showing two of the runes here, and apparently there is gonna be four new runes for each class. So let's take a look at some of them. The eclipse right here, this is basically extra crit for the boomkin. It is very generous. Like, look at all this. Look at all this. 30% crit, 30% crit, and it stacks. The Bunkin needed a very massive buff to be viable, and this might be it. Although it's too early to tell. King of the Jungle is uh, Tiger's Fury, which is now gonna be a 15% extra damage, and it generates energy instead of costing energy, which is humongous. This thing is gonna be excellent, so the cats are gonna get a lot stronger. Paladins are getting the Sheath of Light. Sorry for exaggerating that word, I don't wanna make it sound similar to other words, because I'm gonna get in trouble with the YouTubes. But it basically is gonna give you attack power with spell power, and it's also gonna give you critical scaling for healers. Uh, I don't know if they intend healers to actually hit people, or this is more of a PvP intended uh, change, but I don't know, it looks nice, it looks like the paladins are gonna do well. This right here seems to be a, a red paladin mana rune, red paladins have been going through some mana issues lately, so this might help. They also put like a check and balance here that if you hit somebody and then you use this regeneration you can heal less. So that's basically to stop uh, holy paladins from abusing this for infinite heals, which would be pretty broken, so it seems reasonable. Now this might be the most interesting rune in the whole tier, I didn't see this quite coming, so this is pretty good. Raptor Strike has a cooldown reduced to 3 seconds and it is now instant, Mongoose Bite has no cooldown anymore. Also, Raptor Strike has a 30% chance to not trigger its cooldown, so basically, the, for you that don't know, Raptor Strike has a chance of re-establishing your uh, flanking strike, so being able to cast more Raptor Strikes is gonna help your DPS a lot for the uh, Beast Mastery flanking strike build. We might see some survival talents with this, because survival has some pretty nice melee talents, it's too early to tell. I just hope that Beast Mastery doesn't become the meta, even though I think it will. This is the trap launcher, the other rune, basically you can drop traps out far away. It's whatever. Uh, PvP, this is a PvP thing, so I guess that's nice for you if you like PvP, not, not, not my problem. Meanwhile, the warrior is getting Rallying Cry from TBC, that is basically uh, extra HP for everybody, that's a great buff, everybody's gonna be wanting to take this. And then the Blood Surge, that's the other one, Heroic Strike, Blood Thirst and Whirlwind has a 30% chance to give you an instant slam. Uh, this is basically the same from Cataclysm, the Cataclysm Arms Warrior has something very similar. Of course, this is intended for Fury, but still, we might see Arms people taking it because instant slams, that's a huge damage if you got a slow to handle. We haven't seen the Arms rune yet, but unless the Arms rune is amazing, uh, I would probably take this one. 
rogues are getting the shuriken toss, it's basically the same as the gun ability that they got in retail, they just throw a shuriken at you, which is pretty cool, you know, ninja style. It is also gonna be a 4 target AOE, which as I said, the rogue was desperately needing a better AOE because they don't have any, so yeah, we might see the rogue becoming a pretty good tank if this is intended to be the tanking rune. Meanwhile, Master of Subtlety, it increases your damage when you come out of stealth, I do not know if this is intended for PvP, or if they want you to go into stealth and out of stealth in combat to proc this, it might be some sort of new strategy for the new builds. Uh, of course, remember that there is a belt rune and a boot rune, and we haven't seen half the runes yet, so it may very well be that this boot rune is supposed to synergize of a belt rune that gives you stealth or something, we do not know. For the priest, we are not getting vampiric touch as of yet, which is very disappointing. Uh, we might get it, like I haven't seen it yet. But the belt rune for shadow is mind's pack, which is just uh, another ability that does damage. And it's gonna make your mind blast do more damage too, which is nice. This is nowhere near that what's gonna take the priest to become good. Especially look at this damage, 108 damage, that is not a lot of damage at level 40 at all. Meanwhile, the discipline priest is gonna get pain suppression, which is one of the best cooldowns in the game. 40% damage reduction and a resistance to dispel mechanics, that means that you are resistant to porges, so this is gonna make the discipline priest a very PvP strong uh, class, as they have always been, so that's pretty good. The warlock is getting invocation, which does a little more damage when you refresh your dots. Uh, that's pretty nice, but it's not huge, of course. Meanwhile, the tank warlock is getting Dance of the Wicked, which is a little bit of dodge and critical strike on your spells. And they are also getting some mana, which is nice. So this is not huge. Uh, I was expecting them to get a big AOE for this uh, tier. They might. Otherwise, this seems a little underwhelming. The Warlock ones are by far the weakest we have seen so far. I really want to know what the fire runes are going to be. Now for the mages, the arcane mages are getting this one that gives your fireball and your frostbolt and your arcane blast a chance to give you free arcane missiles, which is very good because as you know, uh, the arcane mage is all about managing mana and getting free casts of very fast arcane missiles. That's going to make arcane DPS maybe very viable, which I love the arcane DPS. I, I want to see it actually work and be functional. So this this looks very powerful and promising. Meanwhile, there is this rune that uh, stores your damage, so you can turn it into heal later, like a big cooldown, uh, which one of the biggest problems with the arcane healer was, as I said in my previous video, that their heals are never in time, like they can pull some pretty good numbers, but there is always a delay to it because they gotta put beacon on you and then do damage, which sucks. So this little cooldown to like give you a little quick heal on the spot is probably gonna make it a lot more agreeable to tanks like me, which hate mage healers. The shaman is getting shown three different runes here. First of all, we are getting maelstrom weapon. It gives you a chance when you melee of reducing the cast time of your next spell and if you hit five stacks of this thing, you get an instant one. So for example, if I hit somebody five times and I get five procs, I'm gonna get an instant uh, chain lightning, for example. At the same time, we are getting a new chest rune. We haven't seen this before because uh, chests from, were from the previous tier. Uh, this is probably in response to the feedback of people that said that they didn't like dual wielding shamans. So we are getting two-handed mastery, which is 30% attack speed, that's pretty huge. I don't know if it is as huge as 10% hit, but we might see, at least in PvP probably, a lot of 200 shamans. And this is the tanking cooldown uh, rune we're gonna get for the boots, which is a threat generated by the target by 45%, so you can give this to somebody else too, which is interesting, so if you're a shaman of course you wanna put it on yourself, but what if you are like a resto shaman and you wanna help your tank, you just throw in this and he's gonna get 45% more threat, that is insane. There is also some new PvP items, there's a, a mage ring with fire damage on it and then there's this weapon which looks kinda crappy, so I don't know about that. There is also gonna be two mounts, a, a, a tiger thingy and a raptor thingy for the people that wanna play <laughs> raptors in the alliance or whatever, I guess they got their, their thing, that, that's, that's fine, that's nice. And here are the profession items that they chose to show us, it's three of them, of course there is gonna be more, but they chose not to show those yet. There is gonna be a male helmet with 1% hit on it, I believe from leather scale leatherworking, so this is probably a leatherworker item, yes. 
and you are getting 1% hit of it and you are also getting immunity to nature damage which uh, there is gonna be bosses in Omega that do thunders those are nature damage so that's gonna be pretty useful for a tank probably the cloth helmet is not gonna give you hit it is gonna give you uh, the and reduce 50% mana cost and increase damage on a cooldown like a trinket but it will not give you hit so that's a little disappointing the stats look very strong so the people are still gonna use it of course but it's a little whatever i guess if they put like a black fallon boon equivalent or something like that that casters are gonna be hit capped anyway so it is not the end of the world and the plate helmet which looks like a healer item and at the same time uh, like a pvp helmet is it, kind of weird it gives you damage and healing by 21 so this is pally gear right here uh, I bet they are gonna make a warrior equivalent or a melee equivalent uh, also, but this is the only one we can see yet. They are also getting new alchemist and enchanting items because the people that were doing those professions, they felt a little bit screwed that everybody else got an epic item and they didn't. But here we're gonna see this one is gonna give enchanters uh, a 20% increased damage and healing with spells and attack power. I don't know exactly what a sigil is supposed to do. Uh, I think it's gonna be like a consumable because it says here for 30 minutes. And meanwhile they are also making a potion that gives you HP and mana and it will also give you attack power and spell damage. So that's like a pumping potion. You're gonna see if you're a try harder you're gonna be required to pump all of this or constantly which let's hope it doesn't get too expensive. Like you see right here minor rejuvenation potions. It you better want to buy those right now in the auction house because they are going up. There is a quest in Thunder Bluff that gives you this potion, so you better keep those for later. Finally, they are also making it like a catch-up mechanic here for people to hit level 25 50% faster. And that's, that's, that's nice, I guess, whatever. They are also going to put more experience in Black Fadon dips, so people are going to still be clearing it, of course. They are removing the Black Fadon buff at level 39, so I suppose they are gonna put a new equivalent in Nomeregan for that. And that's basically all the changes, okay? The biggest one is right here, no more GDKP. This is huge, I am so happy, all hail Microsoft. I promise Bill Gates, from now on, I am not even gonna make questions about what islands you go to anymore. So get ready for phase two, February 8, 1 p.m. PST. We are gonna be there, I am gonna be streaming it, so you better subscribe, you bums! And thank you for watching!